experience. We are currently recording the signal. Sure. Okay. Um, next year, can we get a request an excuse to absent for uh, Commissioner Boswin? No, no, okay, we're going to request an excused absence for Will Boswin. And. Um, okay, I'll second it. Vote. Yeah, Do you want individually at the desk? Commissioner Kidd? Yes. Rath? Yes. Beard? Yes. Cosby? Yes. Kessler? Yes. Thank you. Oh, right. Sorry. Ma Excuse me. M Michael Wright is here. Yes. And and are you an affirmative vote for excused absent for Commissioner Bosman? Yes. Correct. Thank you. And do we have a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as it stands. I'll second. Uh, Commissioner Kidd? Yes. Wright? Yes. Rath? Yes. Beard? Yes. Osby? Yes. Dressler? Yes. Thank you. And are there any, con any conflicts of interest today? None stated. Do we have any correspondence, Madam Clerk? No, Madam Vice Chair. As a courtesy to those in attendance, we would ask that all cell phones be turned off or set in their silent mode. Thank you. And I will um, remove the word all. And then apparently, probably we all have just one. Persons wishing to address the commissioners on subjects other than those scheduled are requested to do so at this time. When addressing the commissioners, please come to the podium and give your name and address for the record. Of course, make yourself known on the phone if uh, you're not present. In order to conduct a timely meeting, a three minute time limit per person has been established by Muni Codes Code Section 2 18. Amendments to California Government Code Section 54950 0, prohibit the Commission from taking action on a specific item until it appears on the agenda. And would staff like to proceed with the issue? Number one presentation, or do you want me to read it first? Go ahead and read it. The first item on the agenda is an application from property owner Gene O'Call, 2008 Rio Vista, Needles, California, also known as APN 0185-254-07000, for a special use permit of a 12.8 kilowatt roof mounted photovoltaic solar project comprised of 32 panels. Mr. Martinez. All right. Um, Honorable Vice Chair and Planning Commissioner, is in front of you, we have Resolution 03-16-2022 PC-2008 Rio Vista. It's a resolution to approve a 12.8 kilowatt solar array located at the previously stated address, located up in the Vistas off of an area of Coronado, Luna Vista, Lily Hill, between Aaron and Lily Hill. Uh, here's the House itself the on Rio Vista. You can see it in the red. Here's just an aerial close up. You can see that there is a carport and a structure. So the applicant is applying for a 12.8 kilowatt solar array. It's proposed that the single family residential dwelling unit that also has a carport, but the array will only go on the top of the uh, dwelling unit. So it involves a roof, rooftop installation, 32 solar panels at uh, angled planes. So it's located within the R2 zone, which allows this type of use. Again, we have to go through this dance because it requires us anything over 10 kW to get a special use permit from the Planning Commission. So that's why it's in front of you here today. And then here's the site plan. It meets the proper setbacks. The 32 panels are on top of the roof. And um, it, it's gone through the planning process, and we, we recommend doing all of it. Here's a, what the equipment's going to look like. And you can see it's going to be angled on top of the roof. There's somebody waiting in the room, so let me let them in very quickly. Okay, they disappeared. All right, so uh, here's what the equipment's going to look like. And then here's what the site looks like today. As I had mentioned, there's a carport kind of structure, and then there's the house. The uh, they're only going to be going on top of the house. Uh, so the findings that we make for all, 
uh, special use permits, uh, staff concurs that it does meet the requirements. So going to the third finding, the development is in general forty with the general plan because it's residential medium density, which consists with the goals and objectives of the general plan. So it's allowed to be in this area based on the general plan. So finding number three is good. Um, the development is in harmony with the area which it's located. So the solar array will have uh, paneling to be flush with the roofing. So we're not going to see any kind of obstruction of views from the neighboring residences or from the public right away. So we do believe it's in harmony with the surrounding area. Number five, the development will not materially endanger the public health or safety. So the properties abutting the subject site are residential based on the municipal code. The building provides the required setbacks. I believe there's something in the leading room. Grab him quick. <laughs> Maybe it's the applicant. All right, there is someone in the leading room. Can you open in? We've been let in. We'll go back to the presentation. All right, so we're not in danger of the public health. So basically, the meets the overall setbacks, overall height, the code. Uh, the requirement has been engineered, so these will be engineered. Uh, the building permits will be required, so it meets all the health and safety requirements of the, the building code. Therefore, the proposed project will not endanger the life or property of the surrounding area. Finally, the sixth finding, the development will not substantially injure the value of the zoning property, so conditions of approval have been included to ensure that the, the panels will be kept clean, clear of debris and dust. The, the project will not degrade, struck, or impair the aesthetic quality of the surrounding neighborhood. So that the conditions of approval are which we do for all solar projects. Project is required to have building permits comply with federal, state, local laws, planning, building, sheriff, uh, health departments. The site shall be maintained in clear and safe state. So our recommendation is to approve resolution number 36-16-2022 PC approving a special use permit for the rooftop installation. 12.8 kilowatt solar array located at 2008 Real Vista Neo CA in the R2 zone, also known as zero, uh, APN 018525 or 0700000. That concludes my, um, my presentation. I believe that the applicant is also on the line if you have any questions. Um, the applicant's representative <laughs> is on the line if you have any questions. And what is his name? Sir, would his you or her. state your name for the record, Michael? Is he on mute? Michael, are you on the line? Michael Wright. Okay. No, the uh, Mr. Beckham. So apparently he's not on the line. He was supposed to be online, but still, again, this is a, a solar project, very clear cut. Uh, you know, the requirements are the same that we do for all of them. And again, this has to come in front of you because it's the 10 kW or more. And in this case, it's 12.8, which is pretty typical for a house that size. Thank you. And do any of the commissioners have any questions? I do. Um, Bob? I have objections to finding four and six because the staff is going beyond what the California state guidelines for solar will allow us to, to uh, concern ourselves with. Um, they will not allow us to, to deal with anything that has to do with um aesthetics or um views um we cannot concern ourselves with that and and staff is putting that in here and i object to, to for us to be looking at solar panel systems that go beyond what california is has requirements for so they they their only concern that that they allow us to be deal with is health and safety and you know you put in there will not obstruct the views from neighboring residents that's a moot point we we should not be concerned about that staff should not be concerned about that um and then on the other it says that the project will not degrade obstruct or impair the aesthetic quality of the surrounding neighborhood we cannot concern ourselves with that because even if it did we can't do anything about it so based on our municipal code we could not approve this project because of not making the finding. So if you recommend a different finding, if we don't have these findings down, then we can't approve it. Based on our minister, you're right, the state law from 10 and below, we just got to pass it through. But from KW and up, 
So maybe those aren't things that we're allowed to look at, but in order for our municipal code to issue a special use permit, we have to make this finding. And so do you have another recommendation so, uh, to not finding number four that you would like to see instead well, of this, if you well, don't agree with this finding? Let, let me ask you, if somebody, if everybody in the in the gallery said that it's gonna obstruct their, or impair their view, are we, we're, are we allowed to then not find for that finding? Uh, the way it would be written, that's correct, because it's stating that uh, they are being obstructed, and so therefore it, that finding would be negated. But that conflicts yeah. with California state right. law. I understand what you're saying. I, 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 I get what you're saying. Madam, Madam Chair. Mr. Daniels. Obviously, the code needs to be updated <laughs> as it deals with solar units. You are correct about what you're saying. And Patrick's trying to make the existing system work for this particular case. So I, I would ask that you make a notation that these requirements are, those particular requirements you point out are irrelevant. And and then we will come back to you at our earliest opportunity with a specific amendment that addresses soul. Because we're trying to make a relatively new thing awesome. legislation. Yeah, it's two years old. Yeah, but so no, we have a 1985 general plan. It's been in effect since before 2008. Wow. I mean, it's been it's been a long time. And the thing that I'm concerned about is, is somebody else comes through and they say, oh, well, well you know, this one, this one had to pass this, so you well, can't do it. You okay. know, I don't want to set a precedent that says well, we're doing it this way. Then, then you know, your motion or somebody's motion ought to say this doesn't create precedent and in, uh, provide direction to update that section ASAP to make it consistent with state law. I have one. We're, we're kind of. Uh, Madam that. Chairman. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, well, I, I think we going back to, you know, part of our general plan and the way that we're doing. Looking at cleaning up needles and making all of these, we, we are making uh, like that metal buildings and different things. We're trying to improve the looks of the neighborhood. So if our if this could fall under our municipal code, I think that is beneficial for needles in that the neighbors aren't upset with um, you know the construction or having it not look good in things in their neighborhood because solar panels can be really obtrusive and not very pleasant. And you know the houses up there too are are close together, and I think. If it isn't in the code now, I think we should look at that as being a part of it to make sure that it doesn't obstruct views or that it fits in the harmony of the development area. Madam Chair, Mr. Daniels would like to address that uh, comment. Okay. The, uh, but Commissioner Rath is right. Uh, the state has overridden our ability to object because it obstructs views. The state has put additional restrictions on our ability on solar panels to make that point. So, so, so where does the, per, I'm letting myself interrupt. So where does the person that objects for uh, obstruction on the grounds of obstruction of view go to to issue their complaint? State legislature. Okay. Because there is, uh, they have taken it, they preempted. They, they, they've, the legislature has basically made a universal finding. I'm mean, not sure there's a legal term for this. Probably that, 20. That, uh, that solar panels cannot be denied because of obstruction of view. Obstruction of view. So and is it or, or aesthetics? So, so, it, so if it, they're putting up solar panels in their front yard, we're okay with that. I'm not saying we're OK. I'm saying that the legislature has taken it away from us. 
Well, that wouldn't be obstruction of view, allegedly, um, an objection under that. But uh, in any event, do we need to have finding four to approve this? You have, to all of, you have to meet all the findings. So all the findings are, in com are to comply with our Muni code, right. which is that, no longer the law. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's option one and probably the cleanest, easiest way. What? Another, as exactly as you outlined that, or as Patrick outlined. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, another way to get there would be to say that those sections of the code do not apply in this situation. That doesn't. So why, sound like why are they included if it's a state if it's a state mandate? Because our code is out of date. So what about your first suggestion uh, that we amend and it's uh, Ms. Kidd indicated Muni code. You ind indicated general plan. Are you t where we? What do we have to amend? No, Muni code, isn't it? It is the municipal code. Okay. The zoning code is. is okay, so we we this. that you that we had, had ask you right. this to um to propose an amendment to our munici municipal code in order to fix this problem. Make it, make it with consistent with, with the state legislation. With what? With with the permitting of solar panels. Okay, so you can give me the wording when we get there, but Good. I have Miss um Kevin. Commissioner Kevin wants to speak. Also. I just have one question because part of this has to do. This is in front of us because of the sizing. Does the state, as far as they're opening this, do they mention size at all? Nope. Okay, that so, was my question. Could it impliedly only apply to? Our, our code, but mm -hmm. it would need to be that needs to be. But if the state doesn't make that, if this, I'm recognizing myself. If the state does not indicate a size, then can we not state draw the conclusion that it only applies to 10 and under where the public is loose out there? Except it's written in our code. Can I address it? Okay. The, the, the state wants to encourage anyone, mm -hmm. everyone to put solar on. Right. And they don't want the cities to impose Correct. restrictions that would prohibit it. So they took our ability to restrict it based on views. Or they just allow us to do self, health and safety. And the, the best way that I can explain is it's explained to me, if you've got a solar panel system that's heading towards a sidewalk and it's in a snow area, they can make you put something up there to protect the pedestrians from the snow. That's health and safety. But whether how it looks, if somebody can see it, you can't do it, you know, you, you can't do anything about that. I mean, these solar panel systems, they hug the roof, so it's... So, uh, we have a health and safety issue here with the high winds that we get on average gusting 60 miles an hour. If these things aren't installed close and flush with the roof, and there is a warning on the plans, okay, that they're as down as low as they can be, do we not have a health and safety issue with winds blowing... If they're if they're taken that far off the roof, I had that happen when I bought my house. Now, I had the owner of the property over on Victory, which is two acres away. His carport roof flew over on top of my roof, a block away, and almost decapitated Jeremy, the roofing guy, while he was up there. Okay, so if a carport roof can bl be blown off, certainly a solar panel framing can. So do can we make this? We can't make it a health and safety issue, can well, we? That is a health and safety issue. And if they were proposing one that created a wing like effect, but in this case, they're not. OK, it's so and right, right. And this is specifically noted to be as flush as it can be right. and, and warning. There, and there's issue. also a, a limit as to how much cost we can saddle the 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 applicant with based on a res resolution for a health and safety concern. OK, so my my suggestion would be that um, we carry out the rest of the uh, hit list here on procedure and then call for a motion and see if we can properly phrase a motion to do what we need to do here. And that'll be up to whoever's voting tonight. OK, 
Does that work? I've got a question. Yes, yes, sir. What's the difference in this and the 10 PW? Is it just extra panels? Right. It's so a 10, they system. could do the panels and be the same difference. Yeah. Below, so, they could just do administratively. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere in the history of the city, the city decided that there was a difference in above 10 and below 10. For legitimate reasons, I'm sure. But they could have done the same thing and said 12. They should, oh, yeah. They just put but, the number of somehow. But now the state has preempted even that differentiation. <clears throat> Unless they, well, I was going to say double stack, but that won't work for solar panels. <laughs> but, but it was shade bro. <laughs> stupid thought. Uh -huh. So, um, but yeah, so what we're trying to do is get this probed. Mm -hmm. Make it appear that it complies with the zoning code. We've got to fix this. Well, and we've had enough discussion tonight. We're being recorded, right? Yeah. So we've had sufficient discussion for anybody that comes back and looks at this as to what dilemma we're faced with this evening. So the intent is valid as far as I'm concerned, and the instruction to the city to figure out an amendment and not really dilly dally around with it too well, long. This is, like, Madam Chair, this is the first. Bob Rath is here. Ten. No, sir. And I brought up this problem every single time that it's the solar well, panel. First system. time in eight years that I've brought it. Okay. Every time it comes up and they mention this, I bring up the same okay. well, same yeah. thing. Well, I've the, never missed once. It, well, in, in the eight years I've been here, this is the first one that's come forward. And Oh, is it a solution? We got to fix that. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, anybody else before we move on to public comment? No, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, okay, I'll close the public hearing. That was quick. <clears throat> and um, do we have any more discussion or deliberation before we approve the findings and go ahead and make a motion? I'll no further discussion? Okay. I'll make a motion um, that we accept this resolution, uh, noting that finding four and finding six as written are irrelevant due to California state law. I miss six. Our discussion four, centered around five, four. Four and six. What was six? Can we put that up on the? Yes, ma'am. Finding four. The roofing of the home will not obstruct views from neighboring residents from the public right away. Ah, gotcha. It's the last sentence. Okay. And then six, the project will not degrade, obstruct, or impair the right. aesthetic quality of the surrounding neighborhood. Okay. Thank you. And that the, do we, my motion have to anything to do with what staff should be doing? Yeah. Yes. And it, it, okay. And that the staff um, research California law and, and, and make sure that the findings for solar panel systems are in conformance with California state law. And I would caveat that, that the city is directed to draft a proposed amendment to the municipal code that would clean up this code section, if it means taking it out or whatever consequence that it means. And then if we do have to address anything over 10, which I don't think we will, we just need to delete the existing by the sound of it, um, that that be brought to what city council? Or how do we amend well, this? Uh, Bring back for right here first. I'm sure uh, ordinance amendments to the to the zoning code require planning commission review. Okay. And then council. So, bring it back to planning commission. I would also request that it be done as soon as possible. So, can we uh, just do a caveat that city is also directed to draft a proposed amendment to the code, which is basically a deletion, and bring it back to planning commission as soon as possible. Yeah, hopefully for the next meeting, even if you can, yeah. Yeah, you need some white out, I've got some. We'll, we'll okay, I'll second the motion. All in favor, vote. Council Bips. Commissioner Kidd? Yes. Wright? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Beard? Yes. Osby? Yes. Dressler? Yes. Thank you. 
Okay, and uh, whatever applicant was on the phone, thank you for phoning in and congratulations. Is he gone? Okay, or he's on mute. Um, okay, and the, the number two uh, is application from Mr. Curtis Devine for a conditional use permit of a cannabis retail business located at 1409 Needles Highway, Needles, California, and 113 Needles Highway in the C2 General Commercial Zone, also known as APN 0185-066-19-0000 and 0185-066-23-0000, which has been pulled by the applicant. Is there any need to have the clerk confirm that? Okay. What building locations were those? They're across from the healing center where the snow cone place is, That's basically. Um, Ms. John. Completely? Yes. Okay. Are there any board requests? Mr. Rath? Uh, Let's take, can we take Mr. Wright first so I don't forget yeah. him because he's invisible? <laughs> I can't see him. Mr. I don't have I don't I don't have any. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Commissioner Rath. Uh none for me, thank you. I have none. Commissioner Osby. I just have one question because I pass it every day. Out on Needles Highway, it would be on the east side. Um there are some look like settling ponds. There was a lot of um earth movement done on a long time ago, and there was some building. Yeah, there's a bunch of metal there and there's even a trailer, but there hasn't really been anything. I just wonder if that project is still going forward. Oh, going north toward Laughlin? Yeah, but it's, you know, way a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and I just wondered. Across from Rainbow. Yeah, I wondered what the status was on that. The, the applicant, uh, Fluid Holdings, uh, received a conditional use permit uh, from the city for cannabis cultivation. And in order to get that, he needs city water. So that was an un unanticipated expense on his part. So we're waiting for him to come forward with a plan to extend the city water, which is at Paradise. Uh, now, here's where it gets tricky. He can get by with a service line. That's all, which will meet all of his needs. We want a 16 inch line because otherwise he'd put in the eight inch line and we would have to come back and put in a 16 inch line on top. Of it. So he is voluntarily held up until uh, he can get that result. Can just just out of curiosity, not that it's a practical solution, could he hypothetically use a water tank, big you know those big white tanks, that, but it's, or a uh, reservoir? Yes, he could, but he would have to feed it by a truck, and he, um, but it would be for the biggest use of water in those buildings are for domestic, uh, the restaurants. Oh, so it's not much. No. Well, relatively. Well, that's why you know a two inch. I think a two inch maybe. A, Three inch service line is all they really need. That's a big line for one property. Yeah, yeah. So it's probably too much line. So I would think a water chair. I know that lady because I was looking to buy that house many years ago out by Calnev or uh, um, the trailer park where the tra mm -hmm. on the right there's a house and she operates with a water tank out there. It's really easy to see that and. That's one person that, well, back when I was looking to buy it, that that is one person operating and she didn't go through that much water out there. And she's there no, around the year. You're looking at me funny. She sold it and now everybody doesn't want to buy it anymore. Wait, you bought it? <laughs> anyway, so I was thinking for the little amount of water, because that place is not that large and it is a, is it, it's a hydro cannabis, right? It's the first one we would have that's hydro, Mr. Daniels? I, don't, I think it's just, just pods. They're just pods. No, no, no. It's not hydroponics where it's grown in water. It, it is. It's going to be standard. It's layered or something different. Yeah. Something different than what all of our other yeah. operations are. Yeah, they're it's, growing in pods. And, and what, he was, what he was going to do was 
use containers. Okay. But put them in a building. Follow me. Okay. So standard shipping containers. Right. Except. But so that project's on hold right now, until, and that will come to us when he's ready, correct? Yes, yes ma'am. For the water line. But he are, they already got approved for the cannabis yes. CUP. Yeah, when he's ready to do the water and get it moving. It's a, it's a water service line issue. Right. Does that even come to us when it's water? No. So we'll never see it again. So we're anxiously awaiting. When I saw those things laying out there in the trailer, I thought, oh, they're making progress. <laughs> well, they've been there a while. <laughs> they were there a lot, long, a lot longer than the trailer. Traders okay. but I'm just wondering. Okay. Hoping they were moving forward. So is there a city manager report tonight? Yes, I have oh. Things oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're Commissioner Dressler. I don't have nothing. And Jerkia. On board requests. Oh, I asked if anybody had one. We I wasn't going in order. I guess I was because because Mr. Rath. I wanted to not forget Mr. Wright on the phone, so I asked if Bob could wait. Fine. I don't have any. Kevin did. Now we're going in order. Does Scott have any board requests? No. Commissioner Kidd, do you have any board requests? No. Okay, so um, then that concludes the board request. We have a city manager report now. Yes, I have two items, uh, Madam Chair. One is, um, it is water related, but it is in future of North Needles related to. Um, as you know, we had uh, four wells the city was operating. In 2019, the uh, water agency, the state water agency, disqualified three of those four wells because of elevated levels of manganese. Manganese is not a health threat. You can go get manganese vitamin supplements at Rite Aid or at any health food store. It is not a cancer causing or uh, the, like it's naturally occurring mineral in the Colorado River. Mm -hmm. The state of California, in all their wisdom, adopted standards for manganese, which disqualified our use of three of our four wells. We have two wells that are in the 21 to 2500 gallon per minute range, and then two that are much less. So it left us, when you take out these three, it left us with one 2100 gallon per minute well. And as you recall, we got a lightning strike, shorted out the pump. And we were within on a summer day. Uh, within about two hours of being out of water. Because our we weren't able to keep our storage tanks full. So fortunately, we found the part and did a shuttle race between here and Phoenix to get that part up here. We got that part installed in, uh, in the nick of time. That's not a reliable water system. So we began a search for a new water well, domestic water well, of in the 2,500 gallon per minute. So we would have a backup to our other 2,100 well. And uh, we looked at dozens of sites. All we re researched, had a hydrogeologist research all of the existing well logs and even caffeines and they concluded that the best source of water was going to be at the Merle Shaver substation in North Needles, just after you go across the, the freeway interchange. Um, we received approval from the State Water Resources Board that they would pay for that new waterway. We put it out to bid company by the name of Lane Christensen, who has dug all the wells that we had, uh, was the successful vendor. They drilled a borehole, which is about a three inch diameter test well, 
to go down to find out how much volume is there and what is the water quality. We pulled the samples, sent them to two different labs. Both of them came back. It, it exceeded the water quality, exceeded manganese and iron levels. So we were faced with what we thought were three choices. One is go find a new well site. <clears throat> we believe that the hydrogeologists did the survey and identified the universe of realistic well sites. Now remember, we're still in a state of emergency because we don't have one well. Mm -hmm. The alternative was to build a water treatment facility at that well site, number 16. Now, our last costing of a treatment facility was in the range of a couple to five million. Ouch. Alternative three, which we are pursuing, is to cap well 16, the borehole, and to go down to where the old water treatment plant is today along hole number six of the golf course and to build a new water treatment plant facility there. And from there, we can have these three of these four wells, which have been disqualified. We believe that we can treat the water and bring those back into production. Treat it for manganese? Yeah. Would it, manganese but and iron. And Jerry Porter once told me, he said, Rick, I can make the purest water. You're always going to have iron. Anywhere. If we can make the treatment plant work. Um, would it still, it, that's the part that's on the golf course on the road, right? Where yeah, all the ducks and everything road. are? Yeah, okay. So side. would a new treatment plant, if it's going to handle that many wells, um, be the same size? So we're not interfering with the size of the golf course. No, and it's not going to affect the golf course. Plus, there's land behind that we can go out into. But that's all golf course, right? Right next to it. Oh, right. so it, it's not adjacent to the road. So, as you're as you're driving, and you go past the maintenance yard, and then there's the one green right here, and then there's a fairway that comes this way. It is. Where's the road? Where's the Where's the road to the golf? Across. Where's the road to the um, restaurant? On your it, little it's invisible back uh, to this. It's on the other side of the road. It's on the Elgar's the railroad side of the golf course. Oh. So okay, I'm thinking of that big pond yeah. thing no. that's okay. So two decades ago or more, okay. The city uh, of Laughlin was putting in a treatment plant. The city bought the MPUA or city, I don't know who was there, bought the treatment plant reassembled it here and never was able to make it work. We need a better mechanic. <laughs> well, it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> so it has sat there unused for a couple decades. This would salvage what we could out of that. For example, the tanks, the big, the big tanks. Uh, and then supplement it with modern uh, treatment, filtration, screening, uh, other chemical treatments which sequester um, the unwanted compound. And then it would feed what we call the manifold. And it's a big switching piece that for well eight, it's turned this direction and well eight feeds it. If it's well 15, it's turned and the pipe aligns with well 15 as it feeds. Yeah, we have a lot better technology now all, all the way around, but right. that, that's an old aqueduct right. system. So rotating. Um, uh, the water, our water department staff is working with the um, state water resources department and uh, we're in the 90% plus uh, level of certainty that the state's going to pick up water. So they reneged when we found this out? Well, we, we are obligated to report 
problems and turn in the, the test results. So they agreed with our decision to stop any more work on well 16. Cap it. We've dismissed the well driller. And now we won't have to build a new well. We'll build a water treatment plant to replace the one that's there. But we believe and the state is in general concurrence that that may qualify these other three wells to come back in. How much does it cost? I mean, you say one to two million to build one. How much does it cost to operate it if that's all successful? What kind of costs? Well, they, uh, they, uh, we've agreed on a consultant that is going to be here Monday to prepare a report on those costs. Uh, and then uh, we'll share it with the state and, and share it with council. And if state. you're treating water, are you not, not also using now many more chemicals? And right now we're just using basically bleach or something, aren't we? Right now we're we're treating with chlorine. We treat all the water chlorine. chlorine. But and with that will be required to continue. But the the treatment to get rid of iron and manganese involves filtration. And it, and I'm just outside my comfort zone on my technology expertise. No. But do do you know if they actually add chemicals to uh, our not water? Yet. You don't know. No, I don't know yet. Um, but we will have a state of the art water treatment. So is the way things are going now. I just wanted to bring you up to speed. Well, oh, Big Bear did that. You know. What's that? Big Bear Lake did that. Actually, Big Bear did that. I think oh. the the water treatment plant is outside the city limits of Big Bear Lake. It's in Big Bear City. But um, it's out off Lake Irwin, mm -hmm. I think. OK, you know where that big thing is. Mm -hmm. OK, so they went through all of that. I moved up there in 92 and it was I think it was built before I got up there. So it's been there and it's been successfully operating. Is that basically what we're talking about? A treatment plant like that? Right. That's some acreage, too. Are you saying that all the wells? Pipe wise feed to the location? Or yes, the, because when they were all functioning, we could change which well fed the reservoirs uh, because we had problems with one of a, one of them, eight, I think, caving in. So it was unavailable. So we could just go change the alignment and then it could. So feed. all the water is going to come there, be right. treated, and then go. Right, reservoir. right. So it'll go now. They will all go to the treatment plant, and then from the treatment plant over to the management. Does that yeah. eventually go to the tanks? So yes, the rodeo. Yeah, both. And then uh, with that, we are in a site search now for a new reservoir site because having a day and a half of water storage in the winter and a day of water storage in the summer is not enough. So yeah. how? So so sorry. we will add a million and a half gallons or about double the size. Yeah, I'm concerned about the time right now. Yeah, the time element. Uh, well, we've, we've got to identify the property. We've we've got some candidate sites picked out. Didn't you have one up on in uh, They're Gates? They're all going to be up in Gates. Is yeah. where uh, we want to put it because mm -hmm. the Gates area has a lower water volume and pressure than the other parts of town. Well, you got gravity on your side too. Yeah, so we'll go up in the hills behind there. One more question. So are the reservoirs going to contain pre-treated or treated water? Treated water. Okay. I mean, if, I mean, right now, it'll, yeah. <laughs> within 24 hours after the treatment plant turned on, it'll all be treated. Well, no, well, in other words, in the flow, the flow of the water, it's going to go through the treatment plant, then to the reservoirs, yes. then to the pipes, as opposed to coming from the reservoir, going through treatment to the pipes. Yeah, you're, you're correct, the first one. And that is it will go through the treatment plant and then be pressurized up the hill. And up until the line blew out on the D Street Bridge, we only had one pressurized water line. Now we have two because the state funded a second line that's in Broadway by the, the shopping center. Uh, so we're still in the search on the, the water tank. We purchased the 
water reservoir about five years ago. Uh, Bakersfield was decommissioning one. We have it on carts, on pallets down at uh, the yard. And so it will be assembly of that. Is that all metal? Yeah, yeah, it's steel like, like, uh, like the others. And it's, it's vandal. I was thinking about the sun, yeah. <laughs> the heat. Um, but it, it's a six to nine month process to get that. Um, yeah, we're still in all we dire straits in the meantime. Um, I believe there's an environmental review that's required of that will will have to come here for your ultimate uh, review. Well, time oh, is of the essence on that one. Yeah. Yes, um, and then we are replacing the manifold down in the in the golf maintenance parking lot. It's right in the middle of that dirt parking lot. Um, and then we also have um, hundreds and hundreds of yards of water line replacement. Somebody said yay on the phone. Yeah, so there's uh, there's some 10, 10 to 11 million dollars of water system improvements that are in process. Uh, we've known this since 2001. What needs to be done is just we had the opportunity now to. Well, there were a lot of years we didn't have the money for yeah, it. And this too. is 100% grant money ah, by so. the state. Uh, so that's item one is just an update <laughs> on well 16. Uh, I should have two. Thank you. The other is um, if you're if you've been out on the west end of town, uh, the road paver is in town, and they're starting their work on. Uh, oh, getting right road. at Panda. Right yeah. around the yeah, curve. Right, right by right lunch. That's yeah. best. Okay. When I was yeah. here at lunch, uh, and they they are doing uh, the preliminary work on replacing and they will be doing slurry and grind and pave uh, for the next four weeks or so. In the meantime, we are finalizing engineering for another $3 million of streets that will be done uh, in hopefully late spring. What's that general area of town? Well, there's uh, some of the streets. Uh, right now, we're doing some of the streets down off of front. And uh, on the other side of Broadway, slurry, and there's one or two grind and pay. And then the other, the next area that seemed to be, uh, it was the vistas and uh, The Cibola, uh, oh, down. Well, that's off front. Basically, yeah, it's this side of Broadway. It's kind of that area. And uh, and then we received word that we got, we received approval from a bill that uh, Congressman Obernolte championed that got us another eight hundred thousand dollars of road repair money. So that engineering was authorized once we got word that that's now available. The other is, um, and this is kind of a general, uh, it's not really probably on topic, but uh, we have, we continue to have acts of violence or, or vandalism in the community. Most recent was down at Jack Smith Park, where the big cabana is, where there are a lot of kind of group picnics, there's a pedestal, electric pedestal. And that's where the wires come out of the ground and they are housed in a structure that's about maybe four foot tall and they're encased. Over the weekend, we came in <laughs> possession of a video of four or five kids destroying that. And in the final acts of destruction, 
there are sparks flying everywhere. If the ground would have been wet, then he did. I, were they identified? Uh, yeah, well, the, you uh, can't say it's today, under investigation. <laughs> vandals today take videos. Yeah, and post them. One of them took a video and shared it, and we came in possession. Good. We met with the school, met with the sheriffs to identify, and they've been identified. And one of three of them or four of them are under 18. One of them, by a matter of a couple of weeks, is over 18. That is felony vandalism. Mm -hmm. Which means they'll get a weekend of community service. Well, uh, at least they'll meeting with the parents and the students on Monday. You set an example. What I uh, what I intend to ask for is 80 to 120. I haven't fixed on a number yet of community service hours. Full restitution for the $4,100 that it costs us to replace that. Plus, there's a fine in our vandalism ordinance to go from $1,500 to $5,000. And I'm looking at another remedy that hopefully will address it. it's underage drinking. Where are they getting because it? Because they were they were um, drunk would be an understatement. So uh, good kids. You might also add a class in elect electrocution. Well, maybe this will be a great learning experience. They yeah, they didn't get hurt, but right. for that, them and their parents. Well, and that's what that's what I I want this to be is uh, stupidity. I mean, sheer stupidity. Well, if they could have been electrocuted, uh, you know, what drives someone to destroy public property? Hey, did you meet with the parents? Not yet. Monday, Monday morning. Did morning. you just say that? Yeah. My brain but clicked on. Okay. But eight o'clock Monday morning. And we can we can uh, fully prosecute or reach this settlement. And I've generally outlined the settlement that I'm going to look for. My odds thinking. of getting something is better for that than prosecuting. Sure, because I mean, we have to rely on others like right. the DA. Well, and they're yeah, they're not doing anything. Like you're lucky to get a conviction for murder these days. Well, it's um, this uh, the the. Unintentionally putting themselves at risk, yeah. even though the pedestal was laid. Well, so of course, in electrocution, so yeah. uh, give them a pamphlet, some from some place they have to read and get tested on. Let the school do it. Right. So it's um, vandalism continues to be a problem. This is uh, like four said, of them or five of them. Well, it's four or five. I think. Okay. Uh, but one of them, just by a matter of a couple of weeks. What time of the day or night did this happen? It was dark. That's all I can tell you. Okay. But it's. Uh, so where did the electronics go to? Yeah. Property that's being damaged. Uh, well, same thing with the parks, what they've done to the bath, the restrooms, break, breaking yeah. toilets and right. lighting bombs off in toilets or whatever. Right. Um, what did the electronics go to? Is our park down now well, in it, some it, way? They they're, they come off the road and they're in conduit. Then they come up and then they feed that cabana. Oh, just the lighting? Uh, lighting and any electrical appliances that people want to plug in. Oh, so there are plugs. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so and right now the are, weather is beautiful, so there's a lot of, pe lot of people that probably want to go down well, there. It's, um, we are um, have met today. We met today with Caltrans. Uh, they are doing a five million dollar big monument sign at the east end of town, about five mile road. 
uh, which I mean, darn things 30 feet high and 70 feet wide. Why out there? Uh, because it's part of the state's gateway program. So they're doing five of those along uh, Parker, on this side of Parker, um, down on Highway A 10, 40, and 15 as it comes into California. But they, they're they're dramatic signs. Uh, she's seven foot bare. Oh, nice. Bare. Wow. Um, they are also have shared with us plans to do uh, re landscaping of the three interchanges in town, including public art. So, what I I don't know whether this is it, but what I have in mind is. You know, some intersections you see, uh, interchanges you see up in Las Vegas on the freeway. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what, we, but I, I don't know enough yet. And the third is we received a, a grant to build a new park uh, at First and Second Beach. And it will involve um, handicap access down to the beach of, of concrete rain. It will involve a walking trail along the river. It will involve additional parking down at what is Manny Morris Park, which is almost to Rio Buena Vista. Uh, and then we're going to put some grass out in front of the 19th hole between the 19th hole and the river and some picnic tables and then add parking at the eastern end plus children's play equipment, plus a restroom. More parking uh, in addition to those few spaces that are there? Right. Now, didn't we already have funding going into that whole project? Um, no, we had plans. We had plans, no we, money. Uh, okay. got, we submitted it and got funded 2.2 million. Okay, good, cool. So uh, we should have a world-class beach park. Where is that last amount coming from? Well, it came out of a program called Clean California. And it's funny, all three of those projects I just mentioned are all being funded out of California. Caltrans. Clean California. Yeah. The monument sign, the landscaping, and this park. How are the roads, generally speaking, that Caltrans is responsible for? Do we have any of those? Yes. Um, what kind of condition are they in? Well, um, 95 south from the freeway to Blythe, would that's, you rather I didn't ask any questions? That that's no. that's a state highway. Um, Which way? Ninety five. Ninety five south. South. South of I forty. That's a, that's a state highway. Um, but that's about the only state highway in town. Well, that's in good shape. Yeah. <laughs> Thank um, you. Caltrans also had a free dump day last weekend. They collected one hundred and sixty cubic yards of stuff, mattresses, tires, um, whatever people had in the garage. We have one coming up on the 26th where we're going to put seven 40 yard roll off boxes around town, man them to make sure nothing goes in there that's not supposed to be. And uh, so another another thing <laughs> that we're doing. They went well the last couple of times. Yeah, very well. Is there any updates on a grocery store? Um, not really. I mean, it's uh, we've talked, we continue to have conversation with them. It's all positive. It's always moving forward. Um, and what do you say? Uh, what's that? As early as October. As, as early, early as October. December. Yeah. Is that before the gas prices went up? Two weeks ago. So we maintain a relation, uh, you know, conversation with them. I thought you were going to say the underpass, but uh, the underpass is on the BNSF uh, decision making, and it's just it's the it's right of way right. permit to work in their right of way. Mm -hmm. They've approved the design. What about the old road? The what? The old road that went right over the rail tracks to get to the other side. Well, in 2005, the city council uh, allowed that to be closed. 
but uh, it was I thought it was conditional. Uh, it was conditional that the city identify a. A right of way and BNSF was obligated to build a road that connected over to K Street. The city never identified that right away. So oh, the BNSF was required to build. So therefore, out of Colorado Shores and that whole area, we have one way out. Now we have the, the dirt road that comes in right there at the, at the underpass. But uh, yeah, they they approved closing, and the condition was that they push that another street through. And that it was a comment upon the city doing some actions, which didn't get done. I was on the council in that. Huh? I was on the council when that went through. You know more about it than I do. Then. So yeah. what happened? What? I never mind. Kevin can't stand me asking questions here. So well, what I understand that. was the the only place to come out didn't line up with the existing street. I had to move them so well. Yeah, really. But you know, the, the people they did what they needed to do at the time and what resources allow. So I, I, I don't want to be critical of our predecessors. But wasn't it the job of the railroad to complete it since they wanted us to give up it their- It was a five year period of time that they had to, we had to identify the right of way they had to. But during it. that five years, right. it was, it, the railroad would have paid for it is what I'm asking. Right, the railroad right? would have paid for it. They were obligated to pay for it. So because we didn't do anything, now we can't get well, it. Right, the, the five year, period is expired. But no one would have thought that they would have held this underpass up like design. No, it, for, we this is just ridiculous. In December. They've got another motive. 20, yeah, probably. 2020. Yeah. So it's been a year and a half. We selected the contract. Phillips excavation has the barrier that's going to go across there. In their yard. And all we have is some a bunch of attorneys sitting on it. Yeah. Well, we need, hey. to, we need to get a right. <laughs> I was number one in my class, what can I say? From the NSF. And you got to get a hold of the right person. Oh, about. I know. I know. I'll and, sneak and in there and get a job. Ask also. for assignments. Patrick's in weekly conversations with the person they identify. It's terrible. So we. So anyway, um, oh, Patrick's too now, nice. The last thing I want to do is bring up to you that uh, tomorrow is the community planning, the general plan open house. Mm -hmm. The focus is on what is downtown. Uh, what what are the economics of commercial development? How much land do we have available in commercial downtown? at the freeway interchanges and what uses are we going to try and attract? What kind of strategic investment to induce development into downtown? It's all those policy questions wrapped up in it. So what about the project? Sorry, the, the big project right by the needle signed by El Garces, the big block. What's happening with that project? We're, That's we're a in huge. communication. I saw a letter that went to them within or since Monday. But they're still planning going forward with it. It's just they're that's, not moving. That's best I understand. But okay. if they fail to meet a deadline, the property comes back to the city. Okay. And is that this year? Oh yeah. Okay. But it's it's imminent. Yeah, they had specific performance. Right. Now when we initially sold it, they had to start substantial construction within a year. But they asked for an extension because of COVID. Council said, okay, but we're going to do three month milestones. And if you fail to meet one of those specific milestones, then it's breach. And they already have. So they met the first one, and that mm -hmm. is they submitted their formal plan. Oh. And then we commented back, and we'll, I'll give you a more. Collaborative update. But we want to see that. We want to see that happen. Hampton Inn's coming right along. Hampton Inn is, uh, I think right now they're talking about uh, August. 
They had a contractor that didn't want to work last summer in the heat, LA contractor. Mm -hmm. And they got Maxine a water. couple months behind. And then the supply chain probably pushed them another month back, but they're stucco on the building. So it is progressing, right. albeit. All right. Um, I want it all. I want it all now. Um, but uh, the Best Western has sold. Um, there's a new owner there. Uh, we are working with um, the Flavor of India to relocate it into the old juices. I thought that thing, I saw a notice in the paper, something about some lean sales or it's a change of ownership in the legal notices about, and to me, what it looked like, and I don't know, if you're selling a place, you put a notice out in the newspaper that you have X amount of days if you have a lien against this place or any of the contents of it to come and claim the money or the property. So that's what I read in the newspaper. So that indicated to me the sale went through yeah, and they're progressing. Through. They went through and they sent the, the so family. this that they're moving on. And we have connected the owner of the Indian food restaurant with the owner of baking juices. Oh, so the restaurant. people that bought it aren't starting a restaurant. No, they're not oh. restaurateurs. It's an investment. Okay, got it. And their interest was in the hotel, but it was packaged as one one piece. Um, can't think of anything else, but I could go on for that. Okay. Do we have anything else from any of the commissioners? From any of the staff? Okay. May, uh, may I have a motion to adjourn, please? I just did. Motion. To when adjourn. I call for it, hmm. out of order. Second. I'll second. Speech to I'd it. like to second that motion. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, recording stopped.